Jeffree Star used my space as a platform to advance his music and fashion design career. He utilized the platform like a personal blog to share his daily life, while also commenting on various societal issues, such as confidence, beauty, and fame. Since he had an existing fan base from various websites, Jeffree's My Space profile had a significant number of friends right from the beginning. His My Space photo shoots gained tremendous popularity, receiving over 50,000 comments frequently as an independent artist. Jeffrey quickly became one of the most famous individuals on my space, often placed in the top tier of daily rankings with the likes of Tila Tequila, Forbidden, and Audrey Kitching. So we're here today because I'm being photographed for two different looks, and obviously everyone needs to see some behind the scenes of me getting ready, getting my hair done, my crazy hairdresser, my outfit changes, we're gonna see it all. Jeffrey began his career as a musician in the early 2000s, and his music is a fusion of electropop and dance pop genres. He first gained attention for his unique look, which included brightly colored hair, bold makeup, and daring fashion choices. His aesthetic helped him stand out in the crowded music industry, and he soon built a loyal following. One of the most significant milestones in his career was his participation in the Vans Warp Tour. The Warp Tour was a traveling music festival that began in 1995 and ran until 2019. The festival primarily showcased punk, alternative rock, and metalcore bands. In 2007, Starr participated in the Vans Warp Tour for the first time. At the time, he was still relatively unknown, but his performances quickly drew attention from fans and industry insiders. His shows were notable for their high energy and theatrical elements. Starr often appeared on stage wearing elaborate costumes and performing choreographed dance routines. Nine this time with Jeffree Star. What's up, bitches? All right, so your debut album has been in the works for several years now, uh, and you're finally releasing it this summer. Uh, what finally. Yeah. What took so long? Well, I had a lot of bumps in the road. Some producers screwed me over. I had to do community service for a few months because I had a felony weapons charge. Only the normal things that would happen to me. Yeah. So it's finally coming out September 1st. Okay. Uh, now, other than uh, or differing from other bands who would sign to a label, you made your own. Uh, why exactly. did you go that route? Well, Warner Brothers gave me the opportunity to like make my own label and have their distribution. Mm -hmm. And so many bands I see get effed over so much and they tour for years and they're making no money. So I wanted yeah. the perfect deal for someone like me that does everything on my own. As Jeffrey continued to tour with the Warp Tour, his fan base grew. He quickly became one of the most popular independent artists on the tour, with many fans flocking to see his shows. He also gained attention from mainstream media outlets, including MTV and Rolling Stone, who recognized his unique talent and style. In addition to his music performances, Starr also used his presence on the Warp Tour to promote his fashion designs. He had launched a merch line which featured bold and edgy designs. Starr would often sell merchandise at his shows, including t-shirts, posters, and accessories which helped him build his brand. The Warped Tour proved to be a significant turning point in Starr's career. They helped him build his fan base, gain recognition from industry insiders, and promote his music and merch line. They also allowed him to refine his stage presence and performance skills, which would later prove invaluable as he transitioned into the beauty industry. Jeffree Star's album launch of Beauty Killer in 2009 was a pivotal moment in his music career. The album, released on Popsicle Records, featured a mix of electropop and dance pop tracks with edgy lyrics and catchy hooks. It was highly anticipated by Star's fans who had been following him on MySpace and YouTube for years. The album featured collaborations with artists such as Breathe Carolina and Matt Skiba. Star promoted the album with a tour, which included performances at several major music festivals. Beauty Killer was well received by fans and critics alike, cementing Star's status as a rising star in the music industry. After the decline in popularity of MySpace began, Jeffrey still continued touring, and by the end of 2010, he signed with the record label Convict Music. What's next for you? Um, there's really good things coming up. I recently, Akon just signed with his label. Love it. So, Love it's it. me, T Pain, and Gaga now. So, it's pretty cool. The first hip hop artist to ever work with a gay singer. So, it's pretty cool. It's kind of groundbreaking. I've heard it's something about Kesha, too. Yeah, me and Kesha are going to do a new song together. Her producer, Dr. Lou, is going to do some tracks. So. That's great. I'm just excited. You know, the black community is maybe going to accept gay people a little bit more now. Now the AK care. So it's good. Good. Jeffrey ended up parting ways with the record label due to unclear reasons. He went on to address this in a video with Shane Dawson in 2018 titled Becoming Jeffrey Star for a Day, where he expanded on his departure from convict music. So is this more like all your music? Yeah. All oh my god. A lot of archive uh, stuff are in here. These are all your records. 
Oh my yeah. god. Come on, memory what? lane. Wait, oh my god, wait, I wanna sit at your desk. Let's have a seat. Wait, I actually really wanna know about this music situation. Okay. Because you've never really talked about no. like what actually happened. Yeah. So when you were doing the music thing and you were all over my space and you know, everybody knew who you were, you then signed with Akon. Yeah. The singer. R and B singer, Grammy Award winner, hit maker, yeah. Like he discovered Lady Gaga, right? Yeah. That was his thing. Yeah. But when I met her it was crazy because I was like Wow, she's an incredible writer. Right, she's Absolutely. gonna be a huge star. I remember where I was. I was literally walking into like a video shoot or something and I saw on my phone that he signed you. Yeah. And it was like an interview he did. And he was like, Jeffree Star is the next Lady Gaga. Well, a lot of people always wonder, they'd be like, well, after doing something like Gaga, like, can he do it again? Well, I did it again. Listen, if you never heard of Jeffree Star, Google him, she know. Jeffree Star is next. I'm telling you, this kid's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. And I was like, holy shit, this is gonna be the first YouTuber who actually like goes mainstream and becomes like a pop star. Yeah. This is gonna be a thing. And then nothing really came out of it and no. I never heard anything else and I couldn't find any information anywhere. It was all yeah. hidden. That, we call that the, uh, those are dark times for me, very depressing, honestly. Yeah. Because I had gotten so far on my own independently, which a lot of, you know, new people that are watching now or people that are into makeup that may have never heard my music or know about it, they don't know how big it was. So on my own, independently, with Popsicle Records and my label, I got very far, but I felt like I had a wall. And I wanted that that next level of like success. I wanted to be on the Billboard charts more. I wanted to have like real pop star success. And I thought, you know, aligning with someone like that, who had already had such a great track record, would have been perfect. Uh, Jeffree Star, he's definitely a male superstar. But the stars were not aligned. I met him at a bad place in his own life. A young fan threw an object on stage and Akon's temper took it from there. The judge ordered him to appear today. And sexually explicit, even derogatory lyrics seemed to be a part of Akon's act. And it was all crumbling down while I was a part of it, so, you what know. What does that even mean? Like, he signed you. Okay, what does that mean? Like, do you get money? I... Wait, first of all, should we talk about, like, taxes and all that shit now? Because that's why, like, I really What's signed to him that? because I kind of had spent all my money and it wasn't... I wasn't making as much anymore because MySpace was dying. Mm. So then like the tax liens hit and I'm like, well, I don't have any money to pay my taxes. And then I went to him to like help, you know, me stay afloat so I wouldn't I be that. starving I dead. Sense. Oh, <laughs> that's, wow. Yeah, so he did, like, he's not a shitty person. He um, paid for my back teeth. This is like some real shit in Atlanta and like started the process of me feeling good about myself. And you know, he had me with A-list people producing and it was just his own shit was going down and it was just, so then what happened? I mean, like, did that, did you guys ever actually put out a song? Yeah. Which one? Um, Prom Night was our main one. I'll never forget when we finished that song because I had his iconic jail clink noises in the beginning of my song. Convict. And that was such a crazy feeling from like growing up listening to all this music and the T-Pains and Akons and everything like, and to have that staple like Convict. 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 And my song yeah. was like, I, it was such a surreal, crazy moment. And I was like, all right, I think it's finally all happening for me. Jeffrey continued to release music independently and gained a following on social media platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. In 2014, he debuted his makeup brand, Jeffree Star Cosmetics, to the world in the video titled Jeffree Star Cosmetics' first ever brand photo shoot, which features his long-term friend, Nicole Faulkner, also known as Lipstick Nick. What's up, guys? Today we are here shooting my very first ever Jeffree Star Cosmetics makeup ad. This is my head makeup artist, Lipstick Nick. So what are we doing today? So today we've been waiting for this day for so long, and I'm so grateful to be here. Um, knowing that Jeffree Style is usually a little bit more extreme, um, so we're taking it down, uh, we're doing more of a soft glam, and then we're gonna kick it up later for some really edgy shots, but we're so excited for you guys to see what we've been working on, and I'm so proud of Jeffree, and we're having so much fun. In 2016, Jeffrey's friendship with tattoo artist and fellow beauty entrepreneur Kat Von D took a turn for the worse. The two engaged in a public feud, with Kat Von D accusing Star of bullying, racism, and not paying an artist for their work. 
Jeffrey vehemently denied the allegations. However, the feud garnered significant media attention and further fueled the controversy surrounding Jeffrey as well as his makeup brand. In response, he uploaded a video titled Dear Cat Von D, It's a Lot Easier to Tell the Truth, where he shared his side of things. Jeffrey eventually discussed Cat on multiple podcasts over the years since. I, I had Trisha blocked a long time ago because she, <laughs> she made a video giving me advice about Cat Von D. Because I, I was trying to get on that view. Yeah, so when, okay, so really, okay, we were, we were talking about this the other night because a lot of people were like, okay, you, you join a YouTube and you were in beauty, but what was like the first scandal that really like started shit off into a spin? And it was Kat crossing my face out, my best friend of 10 years. Mm. I woke up uh, at night and she had crossed out my face and wrote a whole bunch of lies about me. And I was like, 10 year friendship? Like, oh my, it was the most shocking, craziest thing to me. And I, I don't really think about it much anymore. Right. But it was very like, it was so traumatizing back then. It was like 2016, like four years ago. Mm -hmm. Looking back, I feel like I feel like the cancel culture. I feel like Kat Von D was the first person to jumpstart that, and she really tried to cancel me, and it didn't work. And it was obviously a bunch of lies, and I debunked them all. Right. But back then, it was so crazy to wake up and experience no one asking. Hey, what about what's his side? What's what does he have to say? Right. Just full fuck you, kill yourself, yeah. die. You're you're the devil. And I was like, I had never experienced that amount of hate before in such like volume. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, like no one actually cares the tr about the truth or what I have to say. Yeah. But they loved ripping me apart for a few days, and then once I uploaded the truth, obviously th it was all shifted. But having that narrative, a lie painted about you, was so dark. As his cosmetics brand continued to grow, Star turned to YouTube as a platform to promote his products and connect with fans. His candid and often controversial personality resonated with viewers, and he amassed millions of subscribers. Star's YouTube content primarily focuses on makeup tutorials, product reviews, and glimpses into his personal life. However, his channel has also been the epicenter of numerous feuds and controversies with other beauty influencers. Uh, you stupid ape, I'm gonna spray you. Yeah. Will you beat that? No, you can see your Shut up, you fucking bitch. No. You don't have to the fucking While Jeffree Star's early racist behavior on my space was initially met with backlash, it was not until 2017 when these incidents resurfaced that the true gravity of his actions became apparent. The renewed attention to Star's past indiscretions sparked outrage among fans and critics alike, calling into question his character and the sincerity of his apologies. In response to the resurfacing of his past racist behavior, Jeffrey posted a video on his YouTube channel titled Racism. In the video, Star acknowledged and apologized for his past actions, explaining that he was in a dark place at the time and used shock value as a way to cope with his own insecurities. He emphasized his personal growth since those incidents, stating that he was not the same person he was during his MySpace days, and vowed to be a better role model for his fans. We were drama getting one. We pioneered <laughs> beauty guru drama. We pioneered beauty guru drama. And I'll say drama. this, shit's not fun. No, 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 no. It is probably the worst <laughs> we thing. We crawled so they can run with drama now. Before it all unfolded, Jeffrey, Laura, Manny MUA, Gabriel, and Nikita Dragon were part of a close-knit group of beauty influencers that frequently collaborated and appeared in each other's content. However, in early 2018, the dynamics within the group began to shift. Speculations about a fallout between Star and the rest of the group started to surface circulate, fueled by subtle social media interactions and the absence of joint appearances. On August 12, 2018, Gabriel posted a tweet featuring a photo of himself, Laura, Manny, and Nikita. The caption read, Bitch is bitter because without him we're doing better. Gabriel's tweet set off a chain reaction that would ultimately lead to the implosion of the group's friendship in a series of public apologies and accusations. In response to this tweet, fans began to dig into the past of Laura Lee, Manny MUA, Nikita Dragon, as well as Gabriel himself, uncovering racist and offensive tweets from each influencer. The backlash against the group was swift and severe, with fans and followers expressing their disappointment and anger over the influencer's past behavior. Laura Lee was hit particularly hard by the controversy. A series of her old tweets containing racist language and offensive jokes resurfaced, leading to widespread condemnation. Lee lost hundreds of thousands of subscribers and faced backlash from her brand partners, resulting in the discontinuation of her collaboration with Morphe and the cancellation of her makeup line, Laura Lee Los Angeles, and Ulta Stores. Lee released a Tearful apology video addressing the tweets and her past behavior, which was met with mixed reactions from the public. Like Laura Lee, Manny
Manny MUA, Nikita Dragon, and Gabriel also faced backlash for their past offensive tweets. Each influencer issued apologies, acknowledging their past mistakes and vowing to learn and grow from the experience. While they also faced consequences in terms of lost subscribers and brand partnerships, the fallout was not as severe as it was for Laura Lee. Throughout the unfolding drama, Jeffree Star remained relatively silent, only indirectly addressing the situation on social media. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love karma. All right. Hi, everyone. How is everyone doing? I have been at the office all morning. I am, of course, freshly back from New Jersey, which, by the way, I still can't get over it. Like, girl, we shut down the mall. It will never be the same. <laughs> Um, but I've been in meetings and doing paperwork all day. Um, I know most of you have watched my series with Shane, so you know what I do at the office now. And girl, it has been a long day. We have so many new accessories coming out, so many new products. We have, of course, the liquid frost highlighter coming on August 24th with a bunch of really cool and fun new stuff and merch and restocks. And girl, it ain't slowing down around here. And I just want to give a quick shout out to life to God, to energy, to everything that removed all of the negative pieces of shit from my life last year. Um, every day I say, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am doing great. Life is fucking amazing. So I'm just over here sipping my tea, living my motherfucking life and loving every second of it. So for everyone that has been checking on me, girl, I'm doing just fine. My crown hurts though. <laughs> I've been getting asked a lot. Are you ever gonna tell your side of the story? I don't even think I have to. I think everything will come out eventually on its own this year. Um, there's still four months left. 2018 has been a fucking journey, girl. So, <sighs> I'm bored. He later discussed the scandal in a video on Shane Dawson's YouTube channel, stating that he felt hurt by his former friend's actions and that their true colors had been revealed. Star emerged relatively unscathed from the controversy, with many fans sympathizing with his position in the situation. In 2019, the beauty community was rocked by a scandal involving Jeffree Star, James Charles, and Toddy Westbrook. Westbrook, a fellow beauty influencer, posted a video accusing Charles of predatory behavior and disloyalty. It's like, no big deal. Like, sucking dick and cock. Like, I'm just like, oh my god. Time and place. And you did it at my birthday dinner. Star, who was already embroiled in a feud with Charles, added fuel to the fire by supporting Westbrook's claims and making further allegations against Charles. Hello guys, how are ya? Today... <laughs> Girl, I had some plans today, which will still happen, but got a little derailed by Miss James Charles uploading a very um, manipulative, weird video of just calculation, girl. Um, I thought maybe he would take some time off of social media, but nope. Right back to uploading, trying to make me seem like I'm something I'm not, trying to paint my character in a light that's very untrue. Um, and you've heard Tati's video. Now, you, I, most of you, I'm sure, will see James's today. Um, and I have a lot to say, because I never got to tell my side of the story. I tweeted what I tweeted, and I tried to smooth things over so everyone could be cool behind the scenes, but um, no. When lies are told about you, when things are misconstrued, it's not okay. So y'all can think whatever you want about this situation, but hold up. <sighs> I didn't want to have to upload a video. I didn't want this to continue. But when someone comes for you and lies on your name, it's unacceptable. Um, there were so many lies in his video. A lot of people are, what, what do we believe? You're going to know what to believe when I really show you the facts, okay? There's screenshots. There's a lot of things that were not presented correctly. Um, I didn't want to have to do this, but... I will have to respond to this and I will show you guys things that um, I'm sure he never wanted to come to light, but here we are. However, when Charles released a video providing evidence to refute the claims, public opinion shifted and Starr was heavily criticized for his involvement in the drama. The controversy resulted in a loss of followers and subscribers for everyone. 
also in 2019. Jeffrey collaborated with fellow YouTuber Shane Dawson for a documentary titled The Beautiful World of Jeffrey Star. The series provided an in-depth look into Star's life and business while also documenting the creation of their highly successful makeup collaboration, The Conspiracy Collection. However, the partnership faced backlash in 2020 when Dawson was called out for his past racist content and inappropriate behavior involving minors. As a result, Star's association with Dawson tainted his image further, with many questioning his judgment and collaborating with Shane. Despite numerous controversies and setbacks, Jeffrey has managed to maintain his status as a major player in the beauty industry. His cosmetics brand continues to thrive, and he remains an influential figure on social media platforms, particularly YouTube. Star's resilience and adaptability have undoubtedly contributed to his sustained success, but his controversial past and penchant for drama continue to cast a shadow over his achievements. The evolution of Jeffree Star is a tale of success, perseverance, and controversy. From his early days as a MySpace sensation to his current position as a beauty mogul, Star's journey has been anything but smooth. His career has been rife with numerous scandals and feuds, which have both fueled his fame and threatened his reputation. As Star continues to navigate the ever-changing landscape of the beauty and entertainment industry, it remains to be seen whether he can successfully leave his controversial past behind or if it will continue to shape his future.